Hello, welcome back, my beautiful creative people out there. Uh, this is Diana with Crazy Creativity, and today I have a, a special um, kind of tutorial that I wanted to show you guys how I turn in this can into metal tabs for my junk journals. I use them for my cards, and I use them for many things, but and I use other stuff. I make other things too, but today I'm just going to teach you guys how I make uh, the tabs for my books and my junk journals. And um, and it's really easy. I grab a soda can. I wash it before, so this water that you guys see here is uh, it's just water with soap. But uh, anyways, I thought it would be harder to when I first started using it. I thought it would be harder to to cut. But as you guys can see, I'm using my kids uh, cutting. I mean scissors for cutting because um, I don't want to ruin my good scissors, and I don't care if I ruin my kids, uh, you know, dollar scissors. So I'm using his scissors and I go and cut the, the, the can make sure you go back and uh, cut on the cuts again just because you guys don't want little um, pieces of metal sticking out and I'm gonna start with this one um, tab that I have a template for I'm gonna add it on my Facebook page uh, if you guys want to download that um, template for this tab that I'm doing it's pretty simple though uh, it's um, and half of it is folded it's like like divided in thirds so there's a top third and then the bottom two thirds kind of go together for the base um, I have a little lip on it so that um, I'm able to not for it not to be sharp I mean the, it, once you cut it with scissors it's not sharp at all I don't need to sand it or anything like that and I'm a also able to cut a little window out for uh, for the little label or whatever it is you want to put in there um, and I'm able to use just my regular uh, blade or a cutter and I just go over it and over it again like if you were cutting like balsa wood or something hard and it's really easy and if you score it and kind of like go back and forth on it, it it snaps right out and just again just be careful because sometimes like little splinters do come pop up and you don't want to cut yourself with this it hurts a lot I feel like I got shot or something <laughs> I don't know but it hurt a lot last time I was cleaning I didn't see a little shard and it just cut me so hard and I was like crying but anyways moving on uh I have a I use this um man I forgot the name of this tool the little hook to a uh, crochet yeah crochet needle and I use the the I, I mostly use it for the thickness of it to uh, make my curve uh, for the for the top and then I use my what this welder glue and then I just like you guys see I had um cut a ruler in half and then I grab it and just leave it it doesn't need to be overnight it just needs to be like 10 minutes and um, then I make some curves or I shape it around you can shape it the bottom part you can shape it in any way you want and um, it comes in, uh, th this glue is very good at it. it. It doesn't come apart. I mean, I don't play with them a lot, so I don't know. Like, once I install them, I install them, and that's it. And then I have this other little template, and I I have only half of it. So what I did is I flip it to the other side. And I'm going to use, I'm going to, this one I'm going to do a double thickness. So, but I want half of it to kind of, like, like a little tab. You know, so I can put the paper, insert the paper in, in between both half of this um, tab that I'm doing right now. I'm only putting the glue on the other one half of it. But because I want it to match both ends, so I cut a square, and then on one I have the shape, and on the other one I don't. So once it's dry, I can go back and shape the other half that I didn't have the shape of it. So they match exactly. Um, that's kind of like my trick to it. On this little trap uh, tab that I have, I I used it in many ways. This is another way, where I put half of it and then I I score a little trim on this one, like a little edge. It's really fun to do. It's like a, like the fondant. Um, if you go from the back, you kind of push it hard, and it shapes it. It gives it a little like um, indentation, a little lip. And here I'm measuring where I'm gonna put my little holes. Uh, for when I'm ready to use it on a tab, I can uh, I can use my eyelids 
to uh, attach it to my page. But it also, when you do it with, um, when you fold it in, it also kind of holds in there. But it's it's better if you uh, use an, the um, the rivets to hold it into the paper. And uh, this this one in particular, you can just reshape it, and you can actually play with this a lot. I use this needle because I like the thickness of it. I like that um, at the at one end of the tip is rounder than the one where the hook is is a little pointier. So I use that side to score. Uh, where I want to like fold, like really, like just a, like a crease to fold it, like a, like a like a like when we score the paper because it 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 dents it even further than this side where it's like a more of a ball and um, it allows me to shape the aluminum however I want. Now this is another way I I did a little tab, and um, so I use the same penny but I use my pen differently. As you guys can see, on one way, I angled my pen further out, like a maybe like um I don't know how would I would explain it, but I angle it more so my the tip of my pen goes out more from the penny. Then when I go back and uh, put the penny back in there again, I use the tip of the needle needle, and then I go as close as I can from the penny. So now I have the outer and the inner. So I have the outer mark where I could cut the shape out and the inner mark which is a little like indentation or shape um, that I put on the aluminum. And then I put my finger, I mean I um, put my middle thing and if you guys can see I kind of go back and forth on it so it gives you a, a little like, I don't know how I would call it, but it, it, it creates um, a, I don't know people, I'm going mute here, um, it creates like a, like, um, pression, like, I don't know, anyways, it helps for the fold to get, create pressure within the fold itself, like inner fold, like when you, um, so I just go back and forth and it creates that on the crease, like it's not a fold fold, it's just uh, I fold it. I have to fold it over the um, the needle. Um, it, you guys try. You guys can see I'm not I'm not too good at explaining this this circum this situation here. But anyways, this is another shape that I make. I make um, it's just a simple square. So it's a one quarter of an inch all the way around. It's a two inch by two inch with a quarter of an inch frame around it. And the same thing, I go in there with my knife and I cut it. I go over it maybe two, three times on each side. And I go over it a few times. Be careful not to go over on the ends because it will um, it'll leave a mark. It'll, it'll, it doesn't look nice. And since I'm going to go back and forth on it to like break the, the inside out, if you go over the, the, like the corners that you're supposed to cut out of, it's gonna like pop out and it's not gonna look good. Then I go back with my ruler and I just make a, a crease, a line in, in the middle of the quarter inch. And it, 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 it gives, it gives, it doesn't, it, it allows it to be more than just a f aluminum square. It gives it that 3D dimension and it gives you texture for when we go back and paint it and finish it. It gives you that line of texture. Here you guys can see how I go back. I go with that same little. Um, template that I have, but since I have more space on that side, I don't want to cut it off. So I go back with the little um, ends of the template and I add on another like loop sort of to the same um, template. So I can, and, and you know, there's another one I think um, that I do a third loop on it and just that's just to make it bigger. But in this, in this one as well, I went before I fold it. You gotta, you guys gotta shape it and put the holes on it before you guys uh, fold it. Otherwise, it, you guys are gonna have to do both uh, both sides, and um, it's not as as clean or as uh, as deep as you would want it to be. Another thing you guys can do to these tabs, it's use your um, punch holes. 
I use this one to make a big hole and and it's the same penny concept um, you can use a pull hole puncher you can use um, these die ones and I, in this one I'm going to use the same penny concept the little ones but I use a heart I shape my piece and I and then at once it's shaped I go back with that needle the crochet needle and uh, on the back of it and then I just put a trim on it I trim it on both sides and this is important to do before you make the fold before you fold your piece um, otherwise uh, one side is going to be positive, one side is going to be negative, whereas if you do it before you fold it, they can both be pop, both of the textures can be popping out towards you rather than in, you know, one inside and one outside. Anyways, once you fold it, you got to do the same thing with the needle. You got to go back and forth on the, um, on the spine of the fold. It's not a fold, it's like a pressure. Anyways, this is how they all end up being. Uh, I made about I think 12 little different tabs and I play with the shapes and I played um, uh, with styles and I made about four, 12 tabs per can and now keep in mind this is a longer or taller can and so you can you know it's probably if I get a smaller one I'll probably get like you know seven of these shapes and um, anyways to paint it I use this oil based paint this is an antique gold. I'm going to try to find this particular paint because I really like it and I really do recommend this paint in particular. And I'm going to try and see if I can link it down below for you guys. Now, I have this uh, technique where I, <coughs> pardon me, where I uh, paint it with gold and then um, I drop in another color. In this case, I'm going to drop in one of the other colors that you see. On the screen these are the little bottles are paints from model model making cars or airplanes and stuff like that and they're also oil paint and I just drop a couple of drops with my gold and mix it mix it around um, keeping in mind that I don't want it an even brown I don't want an even gold I want a, a textured paint and that's what I do here with this gold bronze looking color. Um, now, I for brushes, for brushes I use my kids, um, you know, ten per dollar. I mean, ten in a bag of a dollar, um, because this paint will ruin your brushes unless um, you brush it really well. Um, but other than that, it will ruin my brushes. I've used, I've ruined many brushes trying to use this paint. And unless you have thinner and all that good stuff, unless you want to do that to your brush, um, you know, then that's what you do. But other than that, you can use these throwaway brushes. Then once I'm done painting, um, oh, plus, you know, these ugly brushes give you an awesome texture, just FYI. Um, then I go back with my wax, my bronze wax, and I just pop out all my accents. Um, I hope you guys like this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, just be safe. Don't get cut. Don't get splinters because it will hurt you. Um, I go back with this bronze wax, but you guys can use different waxes, different colors. Um, they're really fun. I hope you guys try it. Give me a, um, give me a thumb like, uh, thumbs up if you guys like this video. Uh, so please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, we having more uh, ideas for you guys, and I, I enjoy making them for you. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, again, this is Diana for Creative Creativity and have a great day guys.